So in this video I want to go over the basics around handling the squads and heroes in Fortnite. After spending a bit of time playing the game I found this to be one of the most confusing parts of understanding how the whole menu works and understanding it is one of the key things to being able to progress to the harder levels because what it, why it must, might seem insignificant at first the squads actually do play a huge role in how your character and heroes play in game particularly with their stats so I'll start here on the squad screen so from here we can see we have the survivor squads, defender squads and the expedition squads now I'm not really going to go into the expedition squads because I really don't feel there's a whole lot to learn from it and I kind of think it's a bit pointless particularly when the rewards you get back are hardly worth the effort Defender squad I'll go into briefly now. They're just pretty much the way to just to defend your your, uh, your storm shields. Um, I don't really think there's much point in these either. From what I've done with them so far, they eat up more ammo, and they spend the whole time then annoying you because they want ammo. When you're based under attack, you don't really have time to give it to them. So if you're ever stuck with the storm shields, you're better off just asking in the the global chat. There's always nearly always someone to reply, and they'll join in and help you. It's better to have co-op partners. So the more important part here is the survivor squads. So from the main tab here we can see the four different stats in the fort section. Fort, fortitude, defense, resistance, tech, which makes up the word fort. So we can see then each one of those specific stats gives me a certain amount of points. So we can see fortitude is plus 15. So your hero by default will have a certain amount of stats and in the skill tree you can assign more fortitude and all that stuff. But from your actual survivor squads, depending on how you build them, you can also get additional points towards those four stats. So you can see there, I've got the four stats, most in offense at the moment. There's a reason I have nothing in fortitude, and I'll go into that now. So I've left the EMT squad empty, and I'm going to show you how to populate this and why it's important. So as you can see, there is multiple different squads. The key thing to, to know about the different squads is the little icon in the top left. So there's a plus for the EMT squad. A sort of a, a bullseye looking thing for here, a cog, a weight, binoculars. Those icons are very important and you'll find out why now. So we're going to set to populate the EMT squad. So there's two types of characters for every team. You need a leader and a squad member. At the start of the game you will find that you are missing a lot of leaders and as a result you probably just have a squad that's populated with only people here and you'll be missing the leader. Now the leader is the most important part of the squad because that's how you define their personality types. So when you select this, it'll give you all the different types of leaders you have available at the moment. The important thing to, to recognize here is the little icon on the right of each card. So in this case here we can see there's a plus and that plus matches the plus on the EMT squad icon. Now if you look on the left tab you also see there's a little tick next to job match. That means that this character is a perfect match for this team. So a doctor obviously fits the EMT squad. Now if I were to go over here to this guy, he's not a good match. Even though he's a good character, he's not a good match for this team because he's not the right type. He's an inventor. It's always easy to tell because you've got the green plus. So you, I'll know in any time these will be the two guys I should choose between because they're both from the health EMT squad. The next thing is the icon on the left, and that's their personality type. This one is Adventure of the Leader. A matching personality, you get a bonus when you have all seven of the matches. But that's not always the most important part, and it's simply because she look is much higher level. She's 32 compared to 24. That's because I've leveled her up, and you can quickly do that by pressing triangle here, level her up, make her more stronger. So for this example, I will choose this character, but you could pretty much base it on how many how your how your squad members are built up. If you've got far more squad members with a particular personality type, you might be better off matching them so you can have a full team and get that personality match bonus. So by selecting this character as my leader, from the tab in the central the panel in the middle in this, the center, you'll see there's a 32 and an up arrow. That means by selecting her as my team leader she'll add 32 fortitude to the overall amount of fortitude that I'll get. Now the reason these are all important is if you look at the very top left of the screen there's a little lightning bolt and a 16. That's your power level. Now when I select her as my leader this power level should increase and it has up to 17. This means that my fortitude has now gone up and as it was pretty low when we first started now it's up to 55. 
and above the squad you can see fortitude plus 32. Now the next thing would be to match up your squad members with your leader. Now in this case they go green when you have a personality match which is very helpful. They don't. You can select anybody. I could select this person if I wanted to but I wouldn't get the bonus. So the, the immediate thing to do with your squad members is match them to your leader's personality type and for the squad members that's the icon on the left. The second icon on the right that's, this is a separate type of bonus you can get. So if I have multiple people with the same type of bonus, I will get the reward for that. So I'll select him first, and I should also bump up my energy level. Now I don't have any more characters with the, the range damage bonus. But I do have this guy, he's got a melee damage bonus. And I believe there's a... What have I done? Oh, I haven't unlocked this slot yet. So what I would do to go on is this guy who also has a melee damage bonus when you get all of them for example three characters you'll get the bonus together and I'm pretty sure I have uh, I've got a bonus on that somewhere well this is where I'm, I'm quite close on this and I got the shield regen bonus because both these two characters contain the same bonus which on the left side then you can see that it gives me the additional bonus of shield regeneration back to the EMT squad so as you progress you'll unlock more slots and you unlock these through the skill tree if you click X it'll bring you straight to the slot now this is really handy and I would focus on doing these as quick as you really can the research tree is probably a handy way to do it since you don't need to play games it'll build up overnight but purchase all these slots as quick as you can because this is by far the fastest way to level your character up you can you could easily purchase the the individual slots here like the fortitude plus three plus three but you will get far more by adding one of these because for example here this guy gives me an additional 16 and if I unlocked another slot this guy would give me an additional 13 so I would definitely focus on unlocking all these slots as fast as you can the second part of the squads comes over to the hero tab now the heroes you choose as your for your squad bonus they don't actually allow you to play as them. You, your primary primary hero is the one you play as. But as you can see here there's icons below both of these heroes and these are bonuses that you get. Now if you look on the left panel at the very bottom you'll see a bonuses uh, section and I can see pre-planning and where are we going to whatever is on the rest of that. So in this one here we see that the bonus I get from having this guy in, in my squad is that I get to run faster on player built floors and for here reduces the cost of buildings by 4% but this they, they sometimes you will get them that they only apply to a specific hero type so I'm not sure if I have any of these off the top of my head but you might get a, a, a bonus that's a additional sword attack for a ninja type but if your primary hero isn't a ninja the bonus squad bonus you get for this isn't actually going to give you anything so Check through all your heroes on the list. Pick the ones that are the are that work out the most for you. Just because I have a mythic hero here doesn't necessarily mean he's the best. And based on the way I play, which I never use melee weapons, I decided that he's not even worth using. But look, if if you decided that's the way you like to play, then he's he's a, a helpful character to have. But just remember that you've got the two different types of bonuses that you get from each one. You have to. You can't. If, for example, I chose this guy here. I, I don't get my tactical bonus. The tactical bonus is on the right side. If both both icons here are on the left, that means I only get the support bonus, and it seems to only apply to the first character there. So what I need to do is find someone with a tactical bonus on the right, and that will give me additional additional power. So here is actually a good example of what I meant to buy a, a, a bonus that only applies to your primary hero. In this case, requires soldier's primary hero. So that's roughly the basics on how the squads work. Definitely focus on making sure you have the best squad here you can. If there is a case where you you're, you don't have any personality matches, just go for the ones that give you the, the, the highest increase from the start. You don't always need to focus on getting the bonuses, so long as you actually get the, actual, the main increase for that category type for Fortitude in this one. That will be your main focus for the moment, and as you go on then you can work towards leveling your teams. So just focus on your skill trees, go in the direction that always helps to get an additional slot unlock. These icons, usually with like a little picture of a person with a one of the four stat icons, that would usually be a slot. 
and here's another one. So obviously, as you go on, you're going to need to unlock the other skill trees before you can, can create a, a complete squad. But at least have that in your, your plan, because there are certain skills, to me at least, in it that aren't really worth unlocking. But by the time you, you can grind and grind through easy levels, and that will allow you to build up a good, good amount of skill points without having to go onto the harder levels straight away, which is really helpful to have. So uh, that's about all I can think of to go over here. If anyone has any questions, just leave a comment below. There's a, a link to all, also towards the beginner's guide and other guides I've been writing for this game in the description too, so check them out if you need to.